Now, as an introductory example, we're going to look at the program, a Java program, and we're going to look at that program in three different representations. We will start with source code. Source code in Java, the language in which you express that source code, is specified in something called the Java, work, uh, Java language specification which gives you all the definitions of all the language features in terms of their syntax, so how you write them, and the semantics, what the meaning is of them. That's the first stage. Then we're going to look at Java bytecode, the same program we're going to look at on the level of Java bytecode, which is the output of the Java compiler. The Java bytecode is specified in another document, so it's another kind of standard, the Java Virtual Machine specification. It defines all the instructions, the whole instruction set of the Java Virtual Machine with their semantics. And last but not least, we're going to look at machine code. So if you take the bytecode, you can actually compile it down to native code that runs on your machine. In particular, we're going to look at x86 assembly code produced by a compiler that takes Java bytecode down there. So the order usually is that you start with source code, which you write as a programmer. Then you use a compiler. In our case, because this is Java bytecode, you use Java C to compile it down. Then you can interpret that directly in the virtual machine. So some Java virtual machines, including the one that you usually use, Hotspot, Sans Java virtual machine, they include an interpreter which understands this bytecode and looks at each and every instruction interpreted. Or, alternatively, you can take the bytecode and convert it or compile it down to machine code, x86 machine code for example. So that would be a just-in-time compiler usually, not doesn't have to be, uh, which is a compiler running in the virtual machine. When you're trying to launch your Java application, it loads your class, it sees the code in there as bytecode, and it compiles it down to machine code. And that machine code is then executed on your processor, which makes it faster than interpreting the bytecode. Okay, that's the reason why you will compile it, so that you can run it natively and will be fast, and you don't have to have a program that looks at those instructions and decodes them in software, but it will be in hardware. So the machine code is, in our example, in x86, and there's also a document, the Intel Instruction Set Reference Manual, it's actually a whole set of documents that specifies each and every Intel x86 instruction. So now let's look at the example program. It's actually not a full program, it's just one method, a static method in Java called sum1 to n, which takes a parameter which gives you the value n up to which you want to sum up stuff, and it returns a sum. Okay. You see that it has this n here, it has uh, a few variables, it has a loop in there, so it's not a big thing, but it includes a few ideas or concepts that are interesting to look at when you're compiling them down. The second step will be to look at the bytecode of this source code. So this is the result of doing Java C or of looking at the class file, disassembling it. So this is a, a list of Java bytecode instructions now. So every construct over here somehow was converted into an instruction or compiled into an instruction here. And on the lowest level, we're going to look at machine code. So this here is our x86 code. That corresponds to this bytecode. So we took this class file and we compiled it down using a compiler, actually not a just-in-time compiler in this case, but a compiler that statically compiles a given class file to an executable. It's called GCJ. So it's the GNU compiler for Java and you see the resulting code here. So in a subsequent video we're going to look at those things in more detail to understand how one maps to the other and what the different things, the different constructs we see here actually mean.